Launch authorized. Launch authorized. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Jolly Dingo or Jay Dingo. Welcome to the channel again. Today we're going to do just a basic video to explain why my videos are set up the way they are and what is all that stuff on the right-hand side of the screen. So let's get to it. Okay, here we are. Welcome. We're inside the cockpit of this time a MiG 29S, and we have some friends here. We'll visit them again a little bit later. I have the dot tur dots turns on, which are the little blue things underneath the planes because YouTube does video compression, and a lot of times you can't see the planes as well as I can. Uh, there's lots of details in my videos, so you should turn it up to 1080p if at all possible so that you can see as much detail as possible. We're doing a little bit of a boring subject today, but very, very important. And that is what's happening over on the right side of my screen over here that shows you what's happening in my plane, even if we're not inside my plane. So those things stay, that tells you if I'm flying left, right, straight, whatever, that sort of thing. If I'm going up, down, maybe if I'm tracking targets, all that sort of stuff is on that display, even if my view isn't inside my plane. It can be outside my plane. You can see if I bank to the right, or I bank to the left, right? You can see that. And even if you're look, we're looking at somebody else's plane, you can see what I'm doing with my plane. And so that's highly useful for watching the videos. We're gonna, first of all, come back to my friends in a second, but we're gonna talk about the HUD or heads up display, which is this display here, modern avionics, very important. Gives you lots of information about what's happening. And it's also displayed larger here in my videos over on the right most of the time. But first of all, we're going to talk about these flight control indicators over here on the bottom right. And that shows you what I'm doing with my stick inputs. If I pull back on the stick, the dock goes down and my plane goes up. If I push forward on the stick, the dock goes up and the plane goes down. If I bank right, the dock goes to the right and my plane goes to the right. If I go to the left and the further it goes off, the, fur the faster you spin. Or roll, technically. So that's what we're going to do. The other thing that it shows is the throttle, which is over here on this scale. If I go up, then my plane gets faster. And if I go down, then my plane gets slower. And so you can see how, f how much throttle I'm giving it. And this, the dotted line right here is where afterburners kick in. And so at that point, we're going in afterburners. And so if you look outside the airplane, you see the afterburners going. If we look inside, we go below that line. We go inside, you have no afterburners. So that's the afterburner indication on the MiG-29. The other planes don't do that. This, the HUDs is different for every single plane, although this particular HUD, the reason I'm using the MiG-29 at the moment is because it has most of the modes that we're going to want to show. And in addition to that, it's the same one that's used for many, or it's very similar for many, many planes, including the free Sukhoi 25T. And so it's very similar. And so what we're gonna, we're gonna talk about these things. This shows the horizon. And then the plane is either pointing above the horizon or below the horizon. And so the amount that it's a pointing above the horizon is rated on the scale on the right, and that's in degrees. We're going 10 degrees above the horizon and so on. And then it also shows you the roll, which is if you're going to the left or if you're going to the right, you can tell. And so generally, if you're above the horizontal line, you're going up. If you're below the horizontal line, you're going down, although that's not exactly true. You can be pointed above the horizontal line, but still be descending because you're not getting enough lift to uh, actually keep you up, but it's a good general rule. And then additionally to that, we have, this is our airspeed in kilometers per hour. So we're going 850 kilometers per hour for a moment. I'll slow down a little bit. So this is, shows how much, how fast we're supposed to be going to hit our waypoint. Right now we're in um, in route mode, and so we're supposed to be following a path of points, although I'm not doing that at the moment. Um, and this is how fast they want us to be going. This little arrow tells you if your plane is currently slowing down, or if we give it more throttle, that's, that's keeping it the same, and this is going faster. 
This bar in the here tells you which direction you're going. So right now we're going roughly 230 degrees, which is kind of more or less southwest. We turn, we can go due west, for example. Uh, we can go to 270 degrees would be due west. And so that's pretty close to that. And so that's what that shows you on the top there. So now we're going kind of more out into the gulf. And then this shows you your altitude. And again, this is the desired altitude for you following the path that they want. And this little circle shows you where you're supposed to point the plane to. Uh, and so the center of your plane here should be in that circle if you want to be going on the route that they want you to go on. This is our actual altitude in meters for the Russian planes. And so that's how far we are. We're currently going upward because we're pitched up. And that's what we're, so that's basically the in route mode. Now let's go into what's called beyond visual range mode or BVR mode. And this is for if you're going to be fighting things. First of all, down on the bottom, and this is not on all planes, but on a lot of them, you have an indication of what weapons you have. And so you have different weapon stations. There's three on the left wing and three on the right wing. And right now we have these two are the selected weapon. And in this case, it's an R-73 short range infrared missile. And so we're going to go and try and find the plane and show you what happens. And so there's two different modes in the Russian planes, at least. And one of them is the radar mode. And so we'll turn that on. So this is the radar mode. And as you see this, there's a whole bunch of things going on. And as I turn the plane around to go back to find some targets, this tells you the scale in range and kilometers. So 50, and there we go. These little dots show us that there's a plane. We can move this over here and let this if we turn it into track while scan mode, oops, too far, uh, we'll find him. There we go, and we'll go there, and that'll automatically lock him up. They'll fo start tracking him. This tells us, this little arrow here tells us how far away he currently is. And then this is the one I'm currently tracking. The two rows of dots here in radar indicate that he's a friendly. The system won't let me fire at him, which is good, because shooting down at your friends is not a good thing. Now there's two different modes. You can point the radar left, right, or center, and that's this little thing on the bottom here shows you where the radar dish is pointing. This center of the screen is not actually my center. It's actually a little bit over to the right of the plane. And so I'd have to move over to the right of the plane. If so if I move to the right, it'll move more toward the center. Okay, and then this shows you where my radar is pointing up and down. The display doesn't show up and down, and I just lost him probably because he's below me or above me, but we'll come back to that in a second. We'll find one of our friends again, and so we'll come over this way. As we're doing this, there's scan mode and track while scan mode, and then in the MIG, there's track while scan 2, and we'll see if we can find our friends and show you how that all works. Okay, so we found our friends again. And here we are, flying along. Let's get the speed up so our nose isn't dropping too badly. And so we can see them on radar here. And so if we go, so there's a couple of planes over there. But we're going to go and track our four buddies here that are flying around the tower. They're over here, and so we're going to lock them up. And when we lock them up, the screen changes and it tells you now on the top what the speed of the plane that you locked up is going and your speed so you can know if you're catching them or falling behind them. In addition to that, it tells you their altitude versus your altitude. And in the center here, the dot shows you where they actually are. And in this case, they're off to my left. And so that's again where you have to fly to get to them. And once they're actually on the HUD screen, there'll be a little diamond that shows you where they, where the one that you actually have locked up is. And so that's true. So now let's go back to scan mode. You can see again, there's two dots, so I can't actually, notice there's no launch authorization. It won't let me fire at my friendly ones. The MIG has a special mode called TWS-2, which allows me to actually, if I go here and I put it on, here, on them, um, it will actually by itself, it will lock up two of them, hopefully pretty soon. So one of them is where the box is, and the other is where the cross is. And once, once you get them both locked up, it'll show it. The secondary one is the secondary target with the cross, and the primary one will have a star. 
and so you can see them as they go across the screen there and so I'm kind of gaining on them and passing them and so they'll unlock but you can actually with the MiG you can fire two missiles at once and that's true in a lot of the American planes as well but in the Russian planes the MiG is the only one that allows you to do that okay and so the thing over here tells you that you're in radar mode the EO stands for electro optical mode and because we're using an infrared an infrared missile is what we have selected as soon as it locked it even radar it turned on the electro optical and the electro optical is a, is like a camera that is looking for it, but it's an infrared camera that's looking for heat signatures so we can turn off the radar and just turn on the electro optical and we'll show you how that works this is similar but a little bit different in that now we have single rows of dots now it's our friends again and so they're all very close together but they're single rows of dots because the infrared can't tell if it's a friend or foe whereas the radar each plane is transmitting a signal to let you know which side they're on basically so you can tell if it's a friend or if it's uh, someone else and so and also with the electrical optical this does not show the range because the camera can't tell range like radar can so this is actually telling you if it's above or below and so that's why there's no distance scale on this side because the distance the uh, or the no vertical scale on this side the vertical scale is here so it's not distance but again it's a similar thing you can go and you can slew your thing over to one of the things and you can hit enter and it'll lock them up and you'd be able to do that so that's how the beyond visual range mode is I could fire a missile at them if, but I'm out of range at the moment let's unlock them and we'll show you how that range works basically let me see if I can slow down here and get too far away but on the on the side of the let's go to range here and we'll find them and let's lock one of them up here okay there we go we've locked one of them up there's the two dashes over on the range bar okay and there's a little arrow and again the arrow is how far away they are and the for your particular weapon the bottom one is the minimum range for that particular weapon and this weapon is very very short each of so this is five kilometers on this particular scale and so each of these is a kilometer and then there's a second bar which is the projected kill range that is if you're closer than that it'll be very difficult for them to get away from the missile and we'll let them get away a little bit further so we go to a bigger scale and there's a third notch which is actually which isn't on here which is the longest range of the missile and so that's as far as the missile could possibly go if everything goes exactly right and so generally you want to be within the second dash to have a projected kill so you're not wasting missiles but sometimes you can fire it from either fur further away than that okay so the last thing we're going to do is look at the mode for the ground attacks so I've put a couple of different ground things on here and one of them is bombs you see on the HUD you can see it on the actual HUD here but you can't see it on the display over here is this bomb pipper and that shows you basically where the bombs are going to land and so if we go here um, there's th several different ways to do bombing but I'm gonna do uh, one of them here we're just gonna bomb some random tree or something like that okay and so we're gonna go over here and we're gonna pick some sort of field. I'm gonna go here until we put the pipper on that, wherever we wanna bomb, and I push the button and hold it. And then on the top here, there's a circle with a dot, and I wanna keep the tail of the plane right in the middle of that dot as I fly over it. And that'll mean that my bomb will hit exactly where that thing is on the Launch ground. There, authorized. and then they just drop. And so we'll look at them falling, and I'm gonna, we'll just watch them continue falling and they'll hit the field there somewhere, boom, okay, and a giant explosion. So let's go back in plane. And then the last thing we have is we also have some rockets on the plane right now, and so we'll, that works similarly. And this time you can see the pipper over on the right-hand screen as well. And basically we can come here, and once it's within those little range dots, launch we can actually authorized. fire them. And so we're going to launch, and we fire all our rockets, up. and they hit wherever they Pull hit. Up. And so that's basically how the HUD works and what's on the right-hand side. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again soon.